Sup everybody! Right guys, thanks for coming along. Zyna's in the chat first. Well done, Zyna. Good job. Uh, Jack, you, you you did not do well there. You came in like a solid right, guys, fifth. Thanks for coming oh, along. Zyna's no, in the chat no. Came in like a solid fifth. <laughs> right. Okay, guys. I'll switch over to my clip cam. Today's lesson is acid base lesson three. Let's crack on. I'll switch over to my clip cam so I can do some dancing. Dancing! There we go, that, that's me dancing. Sorry about that. Right, okay guys, let's crack on. I think I've shared my screen, haven't I? Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Poor Jack. Ah, oh, he'll get there, he'll get there one day. Right guys, here are my learning objectives. Today's lesson, acid base lesson three. So we've got three learning objectives to guys and we are hitting every single learning objective type. So we've got a knowledge. So you need to know your Bronsted and Lowry acid base definitions. Yep. Number two, you need to understand what the difference is between a weak and strong acid or base. I once had it all, oh, sad times Jack. Um, and be able to write equations for dissociation. Three learning objectives. Right, guys, get those into the books as quick as you can. If you want to screenshot it, please go ahead. Um, I know that Jack likes a little bit of extra time to write my learning objectives. So I'll take them up to here. Right. So the first thing we need to chat about, guys, is Bronsted and Lowry. Bronsted. I don't think that's the right way round. And Lowry. Now these guys, these guys are the the kings of the acid base world. Hi Sasha. Hi sir. I just gave my unit in my unit two. It went good. It was much easier than the past paper questions. Is this GCSE or IGCSE? It's IGCSE, uh, Dilindi, but it it also covers. Um, GCSE as well. The only thing that this doesn't cover, Delindy, uh, this doesn't cover um, as much of the history as perhaps the standard GCSE does. The standard GCSE covers Arrhenius as well. I'm happy to rope that in today's lesson so I can cover all the GCSE specs out there. Happy to do so, more than welcome to. Uh, Sasha, how did your unit two go? Was it okay? Um, and did my webinars help? Okay. So guys, let's have a look at what Bronsted and Lowry look like. I always think that that's useful. Bronsted Lowry. It's always good to see people's faces from history. Doing a bit of a history lesson here. There they are. Look at those guys, looking good. Yeah, so these guys, oh, it's quite nice to have their full names there. Thomas Martin Lowry and Johann Nikolaus Bronsted. How cool is that? Uh, Johann Bronsted and Thomas Lowry. So these guys are the emperors of the acid base world. These guys, their theory is really the foundation of acid base calculations, acid base theory uh, that's used today. There is an extra theory that you learn at A level, which is called Lewis acid base theory, but GCSE doesn't cover it. We simply live in the Bronsted and Lowry world. Now, what these guys discovered, what these guys realized, so they realized, so the, the definition, the definition of dot, 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 yeah, of an acid. First thing is, what did they say an acid was? An acid, a proton donor. Now I need to explain what the proton bit of this is. And the proton bit is H plus. So the H plus ion, this is a nota bene, nota bene, nota bene, H plus is what makes an acid, what makes an acid, an acid. <laughs> That's a really weird part of English, that is. what makes an acid an acid, um, H plus. And H plus, just to go a little bit further, H plus is commonly referred to as a proton. This is because a hydrogen atom consists 
of one proton and going around it is one electron. That was a terrible circle. Ink to shapes. Circle, please. There we go. So, oh, nuts. It's doing so well then as well. Let's see if I can move that. Oh, it's gone. Let's try that again. There we go. And then move it. So it's in the center. There we go. So what makes it, so this is a hydrogen atom. Well, H plus, H plus is just the proton. Yeah, it has lost its electron. Now, the reason why acids are corrosive is because of this, because the hydrogen atoms desperately want electrons and they will take the electrons from whoever they can get their hands on, which is why it burns you. Because what happens is the acid comes in contact with particles like your skin. They remove the electrons from it, often forming hydrogen gas or water, and then it makes your, your molecules in your body become charged, which means they become soluble and you dissolve into a liquid, rather gross. Um, but it's a really lovely definition. So a proton, H plus, is simply a proton. That there is just a proton. So now they then say that an acid is a proton donor. Now, what we need to do is we need to understand what that means in, in, in an equation. So here's what now happens. Imagine we have hydrochloric acid. This is HCl. Now, HCl, I'm actually going to not bother showing it with the sticks. I'm just going to go HCl. It's covalent in its nature. It's covalent bonding because it's all non-metals. Yeah, and what now happens is if I now react that with a base like ammonia, what now happens is the proton gets transferred. Yeah, and I will form ammonium chloride. So what will happen is the proton will be switched. And what this is, the hydrochloric acid is donating, donating a proton. It's donating a proton. And ammonia is accepting a proton. Accepting a proton. It's, it's getting, it's gaining one. Yeah. And this leads us to the bronsted lowry definitions that an acid, any acid, any acid is a proton donor. Yeah, it will give away protons in the form of H+. So the generic equation could be HCl would give away H+. Yeah, it's going to give it away to somebody else. Now we're gonna come across these equations later on. Now, just to cover a little bit more of the history of acid bases, there was a guy called Arrhenius, a very famous chemist. His name is Arrhenius. Now, Arrhenius, I've got to spell it with a double R. Arrhenius uh, is a very famous chemist because he was the first one to really investigate acids and bases. And what Arrhenius said is that when acids go into water, they break apart. Now, he said this. We can actually look this up. I think Arrhenius was about the 1870s, I believe. Let's have a quick check. Arrhenius. It's a bit sad, the history of Arrhenius. Um, when did he live? Savante Arrhenius. There you go. Born 1859 and died in 1927. Now, this was a bit of a sad story. What Arrhenius said is that an acid will break up, any acid when placed in water will break up into its ions. Now, this was a massive leap of faith. This is what Arrhenius said. He said when, when you've got a gas, when you put them into water, they break apart into their ions. Now, can I just point out, when he suggested this, we didn't even know that ions existed. So it was all very bizarre. Like it was almost, it's almost an example of time travel. You know, he said it way before his time, before it was even suggested that ions existed. And this is what he suggested. He actually lost his job at the university over it. They, they shamed him for it. They were like, no, this is garbage. What are you talking about? And they sacked him. It's all very sad. Oh, my phone's going nuts. It's doing, doing my head in. Um, so 
Yeah, so this is what he said, and as I said, he lost his job. Now, can I just point out GCSE questions, uh, Delindy, I don't know whether or not which exam board you do, but a common question of this is why was he not, why was his idea not accepted? And the reason why he was a, he was a chemist, but the idea was very new. This was a very new idea, whereas um, most scientists gain acceptance when they're building on past experience, past, uh, past knowledge from other people. Um, there's some other great examples in science of that problem happening. But unfortunately, we didn't know enough details about atom designs at this point, and so he was, he, that people didn't like it. Now, the great thing is this picture here, we realize that we've got the acid as HCl, this is the acid, and we've got the ammonia is acting as the base. And this then lends us to our, to our next definition of a base. And a base under Bronsted and Lowry, a BL base. Yeah, BL really dropped the base. And uh, the answer is a proton acceptor. Acceptor. There we go. So that's what they talked about. They talked about a Bronsted Lowry acid and a Bronsted Lowry base. Nice and easy, because once you've got one, you've got the other. Yeah, now we'll see this in action all the way through the, the, the lesson. Um, and in this case, the ammonia is accepting the H+, plus, so there's the example. But we can definitely tick these two off. Uh, I'll link back to that throughout this lesson. Right, the next thing I need to talk about, which is I put out of order, which is I should have done the able to next, which is when Arrhenius suggested this in the, uh, in the late 1800s of this dissociation, this breaking apart to form ions, it took Bronsted and Lowry to prove this. They're the ones who actually confirmed that this was the case. So what we now need to put on is a little title, a subtitle to our third learning objective. This is dissociation equations. Now the word dissociation means to break apart, to break up, yeah? So this is a breakup equation. This is the equation of how to break up. You can't use it with girls. It doesn't work. Um, so this is the dissociation equation. Can I also offer you another thing here, which is they can sometimes also be called another name, which is they can sometimes be called ionization equations. Yeah, the ionization equation, which is when something becomes its ions. Yeah, dissociation stroke ionization. So they're the same thing. These guys here are the same. Okay, so I prefer the word dissociation. It makes more sense to me. Yeah, and, and what I'll do is actually, I won't delete that. I'll just say I prefer dissociation rather than ionization. It's because it conflicts with something later on. You can't use, you can't use it with girls. Yeah, it, it just, the, the equation just doesn't tell you the, the right answer, Jack, on how to do that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a problem. Or boys, doesn't work on boys either, but my, I've lim got very limited experience on that one. Um, dissociation equations. Okay, so this is the breakup equation. So what we realize is hydrochloric acid. So hydrochloric acid is a gas. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add it to water. And when we add this to water, now the, notice that the water is not appearing in the equation. Yeah, you don't need this in the equation at GCSE, but the HCl, when you add it to water, I'm just gonna put add to water, add to water, it's French for water, just, just ask Lauren, yeah. Uh, add to water, and it breaks apart into these guys. So it breaks apart to give you a hydrogen ion, a hydrogen ion, otherwise now commonly referred to as a proton. Yeah, this is what makes an acid an acid. Yeah, and a chloride ion. This is our chloride ion. Now, what we realize is this is now an acid. And this is the sentence which I think I've already given you. An acid that, that uh, this is hurting my eyes. <laughs> Uh, sorry, is it my handwriting? I feel like my handwriting is pretty good, if I'm honest. Line. Yeah. Oh, not eyes. Oh, God, I should read. I should read what you said. Hurting your ears. Sorry, Lauren. I do apologize. I will only use correct French from now on. 
<clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. What? Um, so we've got HCl. So this this ties in. This ties into the idea that an acid cannot be an acid without being in water. With if you're not in water, you're not dissociated. You're not broken up. What that means is there is no H plus. Um, and I'll give an example. I'll give an exam example. This is an exam question. An exam question. So a student, a student dissolves, dissolves HCl gas, hydrogen chloride gas. This is hydrogen chloride, not hydrochloric acid. Yeah, because it's not in water yet. A student dissolves hydrogen chloride into water and measures and measures the pH and measures the pH. So I'm actually going to move the hydrogen chloride to the top. Boom. Oh, I didn't move it. There we go. There we go. Hydrogen chloride so it measures the pH. So I'm going to ask this question now to Ian. Ian, are you there? Question. What pH suggest a pH? Suggest the pH the student recorded. Let's see if Ian's been paying any attention to my previous lessons. Blank. Next, the student, the student then adds HCl gas to petrol, dissolves it in petrol and measures the pH. Question, suggest pH. So since Ian is clearly not on the channel, he's logged in and then gone, see ya. Nice one, Ian. I'm gonna ask Jack. Jack, I know you're there. Jack, can you suggest the pH, uh, considering what we learned in the previous lesson? Yeah, uh, let's go back to our previous lesson. Yeah, I wonder if you can remember where it would probably sit. Oh no, it was in lesson one on our indicators front. Where would hydrochloric acid sit in our indicators? Where do you think it would be, Jack? HCl and water. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to give up in a second. I think everyone now seems to have bailed on me entirely. No one's got no answer. Uh, Julius, number one is less than seven, e.g. Uh, two, two is seven. Okay, well, Julius, you're half right. Yeah, your first answer is tricky because you've said a good answer and a bad answer. So... Hydrochloric acid sits way down here in the strong acid area. Yeah, so you'd always quote any lab acid, yeah, any lab acid as pH one. Yeah, so this one's going to be pH one and it would be red with universal indicator. So this is a nota bene, we're now picking up any lab acid. Let's list them, HCl, HNO3, H2SO4 would all be pH1 and be red with universal indicator. Uh, does it not depend on the concentration? Julius, not really. Yes, but no. Uh, I will get to that. It's a bit more than you need at GCSE, Julius. It's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. But in general, even at low, like you only need no point, you only need no. God, 0 0.1 molar, what well, 0 0.1 moles per dm cubed to be a pH of one. You know, that's really dilute. Yeah, just to also mention any weak acids, any weak acids, and these include vinegar, these include 
citric acid. Yeah, these include carbonic acid. They've all got pHs, give or take, around about the five, four to five mark. What do you mean when you say lab acids? Yeah, so these are all lab acids. You only find them in the lab, Zainet. The only other, the only one that, the only one that you'll find in in the house would be sulfuric, and that's inside batteries. And you don't really cut open a battery to get it. These are considered laboratory. You wouldn't see them anywhere else. Whereas vinegar, citric, and carbonic, you'll find these in the house. These are household acids. Household acids, and these are all weak. Yeah, pH five, weak acids indicator would be orange or yellow either one more likely to be orange than yellow in reality so that's actually a really important thing to pick up it technically comes from key stage three comes from year seven and i haven't mentioned that yet so it's nice then to tie that in Zina, thank you very much for asking julius is also correct that the ph does depend on concentration but once you get very low then it doesn't really change all that much so try not to worry about it too much so the next thing is the student had HCl to petrol, what's the pH? And the answer is seven. Yeah, the reason being is we know, we know that the nota bene here, nota bene, pH seven is neutral. Yeah, and neutral means neither acidic or basic. Well, if you put acid into petrol, it ain't an acid because you cannot be an acid unless you're in water because they don't dissociate. So acids break up in water. pH, is, pH 7 is neutral since acids, acids don't dissociate or ionize, depending on whichever one you prefer. I prefer dissociate. Don't dissociate unless in water. So in petrol, you haven't got any H+. There's no H+. Plus because it hasn't broken apart. H plus is what makes, that's why another nota bene here, which we've already written down, PH has a capital H. The reason being, it stands for the potential, the potential for hydrogen ions. It should actually be PH plus, yeah? But they don't use the plus just because it looks silly to just say PH. And only because if you're teaching pH and you say pH plus, people are going to say, I don't understand why it's pH plus. And it's going to be adding in much more complications to a year seven lesson, so they don't bother. So that there is what pH stands for, the potential for hydrogen ions. And in petrol, there ain't no hydrogen ions. So if, if hydrochloric acid dissociates like this, now I need to mention here what's called the conservation of mass and the conservation of electric charge. Two conservations. So we've got the conservation of mass, conservation of mass. This is the idea that mass cannot be created or destroyed. Yeah, cannot be created or destroyed. Or destroyed. Now, this was the original reason for balancing equations in chemistry. Yeah, this is the original reason. Yeah, they're like, you, can't, you have to balance the equation, otherwise you lose atoms. Yeah, H2 plus O2 goes to water, and we balance it because we've lost an oxygen. So we balance it like that, so all the atoms on this side add up to the same as this side. Same number of atoms yeah so conservation but now the next one is now by the way that's not why we balance equations we all know that now we finished calculations in school we all now know that the reason why we balance equations is for the mole ratio that's why we balance equations it's just common sense that atoms can't disappear it's common sense yeah but that's why we actually balance Yep. What I now need to mention is the conservation of electric charge. Now, conservation of electric charge says kind of the same thing. Conservation of electric charge. And what this states is that 
In any equation, the charges on either side must be the same. In any equation, any equation, the charge on one side, the charge on one side must equal the other. Must equal the other. Let me show you an example. So in this one, if I did, I've got HCl. Now the overall charge on this gas is zero. Overall charge is zero. And the reason why I know this is because there's no charge. Yeah, there's no charge there. So when this breaks apart, it's gonna form a H plus. Now, the problem is it can't do that. That there is impossible. The reason being is the overall charge over here is zero, yeah? But now the overall charge over here is plus one. Yeah, overall charge is plus one because I've got plus one from the H plus and zero from the chloride. So the overall charge is plus one. What that means is you must make sure that if you make a plus, you're always going to make a minus to cancel out the charge. So now the overall charge is zero and they now match electric charges conserved. So now let's look at the next equation. Let's dissociate someone a bit more tricky. Okay, guys, I want you now to dissociate HBr gas. This is hydrogen bromide. Right, what's it going to form? On the chat, please give me your answer. What's it going to be if I dissociate HBr? Let's see how long it takes for somebody to appear on the chat. Come on! Oh! Mr. Duncan, will there be a question where we have to reverse the balancing of the equation? Um, Ian, you do later on in chemistry, um, but not usually, not usually at GCSE. Ah, see, Jack's forgotten all of his charges. All of your charges are missing, Jack. Don't go, Jack. Don't go. And then he sinks into the water. Oh, Titanic. I hated that movie. Do you know um, a terrible story here, guys? I went to see Titanic live in the theater, and I laughed when he fell into the water. Oops. People were not very happy about this. I was just like, come on, it's the Titanic. Stop making it into a love story. Jeez. Oh. Well done to all those people in the chat. Good job. So we've got H plus aqueous and BR minus aqueous. And there is hydrobromic acid. I like it. Let's go for the next one. Let's make it more tricky. What about that guy? This is now nitric acid. So what's this going to be? Stretch and challenge, guys. Somebody impress me. Come on. Let's make a Titanic comedy. Oh, God, I think we'd get shot, but it would be hilarious. Jack, I'd be well up for that. It'd be amazing. Can we just have you standing on the front of a boat, Jack? We'll, we'll, we'll spike your hair up and make it go all flowy. Yeah, it'd be amazing. Brilliant. Oh, no, we need to find someone called Rose. My name's Rose Dawson. Oh, God, it's so bad. Oh, God, it's so bad. Oh. Hey, Julius is on it. Julius, I'm going to accept your answer. Well done. Yeah, it's good. Ah, uh, no, Lauren's gone mad with her two minus. Masaru, well done. Lauren's retracted it. Love it. Well done, Zyna. Well, we all need, well, all we need is a awkward love triangle and a murder. Oh, it's getting dark. It's getting really dark. So we, we, we just get a flower for Rose. <laughs> Oh, I love you guys. Yeah, that'd be amazing. So the answer is going to be H plus aqueous. So therefore, it's an acid. Yeah. And we're going to form NO3 1 minus. And this is our nitrate ion. Yeah, nitrate ion, which just floats around doing nothing. Doesn't do anything. Well done, Tanisha. Well done, Ian. 
Well done, Callista. Well done, Zina. Well done, Masaru. Well done, Julius. I like it. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Since you guys are like, I got this. Boom. Brap, brap. Oh, I'm so cool. Oh, I'm so cool. Sorry, I suddenly realized I'm live on YouTube. So cool. Brap. <laughs> uh, so try this one on for size. Sulfuric acid. Boom. Give that a go. Come on. Sulfuric with an F, with an F. Sulfuric acid. Go for it. Go on. Come on. My other half is on the couch and she's just like, what is going on? What's going on, man? Mr. Duncan has lost his marbles. Marbles. It's just a normal day for Mr. Duncan. Come on, guys. Impress me. Come on. You impressed me with the nitric acid, by the way. I'm very impressed. Most of the time, everyone gets it wrong. <laughs> just so you know. Um, but it's really nice that you got to, I think I must be doing something right today. Nas. Come on, guys. Who's going to be first on the chat? Come on. Come on. Who's going to be first? Come on. I don't want to give you the answer. Oh, good effort, Jack. Oh, Lauren. Balance your equation, Lauren. You're so close. Callista hasn't balanced either. Jack tried to balance, but then didn't balance, and his sulfate iron is wrong. Well done. Zyne has forgotten to balance. Owen's definitely got it wrong with his H weird thing. Uh, Ian's got you so close, guys. Think about the electric charge. Loads of people have got good stuff there. Zyna, you're the closest. <gasps> oh, Masaru, you're so close. So close. You can't have H2+. plus. It doesn't have two protons. Oh, you're so close. So we're going to get two H pluses and SO4, two minus. So close, guys. It's not too bad. Oh, Clister's there. Clista, well done. You start. Commendation to you. Heck, have three. That was really well done. Good job. Oh, Julius got it right as well. Julius, well done. Samir, well done. Good job, Samir. Well done. Good job, guys. These are aqueous. So what this means is that if you had just, just a th I got it. Well done, Callista. Good job. Well done to those people who got that. I'm very impressed. Well done. So just to point out, by the way, that sulfuric acid gives off twice as many H pluses, which means if you wanted to have hydrochloric acid or nitric acid be the same pH as sulfuric, you'd have to have double the concentration. How cool is that? That's cool, right? That's cool. Sorry, it's not cool. I thought it was cool. Uh, okay. Um, uh, right, so I've got a new, a new contender here in class called Samir. So nice to have you here, Samir. Now, Samir, since you're here and you just gave me a great answer, I'm going to push my class just a little bit further and see if you already know this. Try this one out for size. This one is vinegar. What would the dissociation of this one look like? Off you go, year 10. Can anyone figure that out? Now, I have given you some hints towards this in previous lessons. Yeah. Do you remember I went, if I go back to the previous lesson? Yeah. I showed you this, look. And I said that that H there is special. Who can give me the equation, please, for vinegar? And I'm gonna have a whole load of questions appear in a second, which is good. Yeah, what's the outcome of this one? Come on, Samir. I wanna see if Samir can beat my class. Sorry, class, beat Samir. Come on, get in there first. <laughs> Come on. Can you believe this? My lesson's nearly over. We're doing the dissociation equations. Uh, we haven't done strong or weak understanding yet. Oh, sorry, I don't know. Callista, well done. Owen's gone mad. Callista's nailed it. Callista, another commendation for you. Well done. Zyna, another commendation. So, Samir, just to explain, vinegar, we realize that we know that this is called ethanoic acid. And this is commonly known as vinegar. 
And we know that vinegar is an acid. This is ethanoic acid, and it is commonly known as vinegar. We know this is, this is an acid. What that means is we must be getting H plus from somewhere. We must be getting this because this is what an acid should be. Oh, Samir, don't be sad. You, it's the first time I've seen you. It's lovely to have you contributing on my chat and keeping my year 10s on their toes. Keep doing it. Don't give me any more sad faces. There's no, there's no bad answers in chemistry. You're doing great. So we're going to, what's going to happen is we're going to have to create H plus because it's an acid. We know that because it's called vinegar, because we know it's an acid. So the question is, what's the other half? And this is the H that's special. That's the H that's special. It's going to break away. And what I'm going to be left with is CH3COO minus. Well done to those people. This is called the ethanoate ion. Ethanoate ion. So well done to those people. You're more than welcome, Samir. Please keep, keep coming to my lessons. It's a pleasure having you. And it's nice to see that I can do anything in terms of helping you learn chemistry. Keep coming. Okay, so just to show you what this looks like as a picture, folks, because I've already done the picture, I'm halfway there. So what would this look like as an image? It would look like this. I would literally have the H plus break off and I end up with H plus and this guy. That's what happens right there. So it dissociates, it breaks apart in water. So my next big question, let's see who can give me the answer on the chat. What does this arrow here tell me about this reaction? Come on, first person on the chat, come on. What's that arrow mean? Come on, Samir, you can get in on this one. I know you can. What does this arrow here mean? Come on, come on. Reversible reaction, nailed it. Good job, Samir, you're in before my year 10s. Well done, you're doing great. So it means it's reversible. This is a reversible reaction. Reversible reaction. Now, what this means, well done, well done, Samir, well done, Julius, well done, Callista, well done, Jack, well done, Zyla, well done, Owen, great job. This reaction's reversible. Now, what this means is, guys, that <laughs> I love that Ian has tried to respell it properly and then spelt it wrong again. No, he hasn't put it in yet. I don't know. And why did you say sorry for the caps? Oh, so Zino apologizing. Long. So this means the reaction's reversible. Now, what this means is that it's now a weak acid. It is not fully ionized. And this is the end of my lesson. We've only got 10 minutes left. So now that we've had a go at doing some of these really cool dissociation equations, uh, I'm tempted to give you one more, but I shouldn't do. 10 minutes left, I need to finish my learning objectives. Right, strong, yeah, brackets, Mr. Duncan, yeah. Oh, du I need to put Duncan, <laughs> Mr. Duncan, versus weak, hmm, hmm. Hmm. Everyone knows it's going to be Ian. It's going to be Ian, right? It's going to be Ian. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm only messing with you, Ian. I'm only messing with you. <laughs> so strong versus weak. So <laughs> I'm weak. All right. Ian, Jack's volunteered. We're in. I like it. Jack, amazing. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, guys, so what does this, so you guys got taught in year seven, you guys got taught acid base theory and you learned about these weak acids and weak bases. So um, weak, weak and strong acids. And then I go to my images and I go to, let's do, oh no, I don't want that. I want the pH scale. Yeah, let's go to the pH scale, pH scale. And everyone will remember this. Let's see if I can find the bit I want. There you go. Everyone learns this, and I'm not, thanks for the offer of sacrifice. I know, right? Yeah. So everyone remembers this, that the pH is what tells us if something is strong or weak. This is not true. I'm so sorry, year 10. We did fib to you. It's a tiny little fib, little tiny white lie. 
tiny white lie. It's not actually truly correct. I can have vinegar at a pH one. It can be done. It's hard work. I'm going to have to have it being very, very, very concentrated, but it can be done. Now, can I just point out any, um, any dilute weak acid will be around about the four and five mark. Yeah. Um, but the problem is this isn't true. What we need to realize is what's actually happening. So here's what's happening. So a strong acid, notice I'm switching to red. A strong acid, a strong acid fully underline, fully, I don't know if I've done so many times. Fully, is that what fully dissociates, dissociates in water. Let me show you what that means. It means this, imagine a beaker, imagine a beaker with water in it. And I'm gonna take these HCl molecules, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna take these six molecules and I'm gonna put them all into water. I'm gonna dump them all into the water. Now what happens is I'm going to get full dissociation. Every single one of them will fall apart. All of them without any, without any problems. Every single one of them will fall apart. It is described as fully dissociated. Fully dissociated. However, a weak acid, which I'm now going to switch my color for yellow, a weak acid, a weak acid brackets um, any organic acid, any oic acid, ethanoic, I'm going to put organic acid, any organic, see later notes for organic acids, any organic acid, that's an organic acid that contains carbon that has the end name oic, ethanoic, propanoic, methanoic, butanoic acid, all of them the same. A weak acid is partially, is partially dissociated in water. Let me show you what this means, dissociated in water. pH around about four, four slash five, and um, will be orange on the pH scale. So if I now take ethanoic acid, if I now take ethanoic acid, I'm gonna do six of them. I'm gonna do six. I know whoo, all coos are carboxylic acids. I'm gonna take six, getting there. There's five ethanoics, six ethanoics, right? We're gonna put them all into water. Boom, 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 boom. I'm gonna put them all into water and here's what I now have. Here's my first ethanoic acid, not dissociated. Here's my second ethanoic acid, not dissociated. Here's my third ethanoic acid, not dissociated. Here's my fourth ethanoic acid, not dissociated. Here's my fifth ethanoic acid, not dissociate. And here's my sixth ethanoic acid, which is dissociated, which is what makes vinegar weak. If it wasn't, you'd drink it and it would, okay, not that people drink vinegar. You put it on your food, your fish and chips, you know, it. otherwise it would burn you. But because it only does one at a time, can I just point out, if you want a real number, a real number, one in 50,000 dissociate. One in 50,000, that's very weak, very weak. So these are the definitions that I need you guys to learn. Strong acid, fully ionized, fully dissociated. Weak, partially ionized, partially dissociated. Whichever one you want to use, I prefer dissociated because it tells me that it's breaking apart. Ionized doesn't tells me it's becoming ions, but I don't like that. It doesn't really tell me the breaking up of it. 
Yeah, so fully dissociated, strong, partially dissociated, weak. So it's kind of cool that, that you then understand what's going on with these and how we start to categorize them. That brings me to the end of my lesson today. Let's check my learning objectives. Number one, understand strong and weak. Done and done. <laughs> See what I've done there? I've got the, the weak tick and the strong tick. Yeah, moving on. Write equations for the dissociation. We can indeed do that. We've ticked all of our learning objectives today. So I will post your homework on the classroom. But guys, that brings me to the end of my lesson today. I will end it there. Let's go back to here, stop share screen, switch to front view camera, bring it back up and we're good to go. Right guys, I hope you found it useful today. Can I say a big shout out to Samir? Thank you so much for coming along to the lesson. It was nice to have you here. Uh, otherwise, year tens, thank you very much for, for coming today. I hope you have a nice rest of your week and online teaching. Don't forget your homework is due Tuesday. I'll be going through that homework sheet um, I'll be going through that homework sheet on Tuesday at the start of the lesson, and I will do it on YouTube, so you can always go back and check it. Uh, Samia, if you'd like, um, if you'd like uh, the homework sheet that I've given my year tens, you're more than welcome to. Um, guys, have a nice rest of your day. See you later, everybody.